Ladies and gentlemen, we present The Navy Lark with our three stars, Dennis Price, John Pertwee and Leslie Phillips. The spirit of adventure is in all of us, whether it's the sustained courage that takes a man to the top of Everest or the wild burst of bravado that takes a drunk across Oxford Street in the rush hour. Our island draft, however, prefer to avoid all forms of adventure altogether, particularly when they're inspired by their lordships of the Admiralty. Are you ready for dictation, Heather? Hmm? Yes, sir. I have been for hours. <laughs> oh, well, here goes. Um, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the East Glossop, old comrades and friends of the Briney Association. Um, have you got that? Hmm? I got that, incredible as it may seem, hours ago. In fact, that's all I have got. Oh, I wouldn't say that exactly. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Leslie. Oh, now, let's get on with your speech. Oh, what a pity. <laughs> oh, I, I know, I know. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the East Glossop Old Comrades and Friends of the Briny Association. Um, uh, what is this speech for? It's their annual dinner. You mean they only eat once a year? Yes. No, 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 no. No, oh, oh, now you've put me off. <laughs> I can't remember what I was going to say. <laughs> I can. What? Ladies and gentlemen of the East Glossop, old comrades and friends of the Briney Association. Uh, uh. <laughs> What's this speech supposed to be about? I'm proposing a toast. A toast to what? Well, that's the tricky bit. <laughs> I've forgotten. <laughs> oh, Leslie, can't you remember what the toast was supposed to be about at all? Well, vaguely, yes. It's either to the wife of the president of the Friends of the Briney lot or, um... A sailing barge they've just bought. <laughs> oh, then that's quite simple. Just keep referring to she all the time and you'll be safe either way. Oh, I don't know about that. Um, supposing I go on about how steady she is for a tonnage. <laughs> well, then I suggest you resign from the association immediately. Oh, lummy. Frankenstein's found his monster again. <laughs> uh, coming, sir. Come in. You buzz, Frankenstein? Uh, I, uh, you, I mean, uh, Sub Lieutenant Monster speaking, sir. Correction, Mr. Phillips. Mm -hmm. If you wear a monster, you would have two heads and therefore most bound to have something in at least one of them. Oh, not me, sir. No. <laughs> After all, sir, two empty heads are better than. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, you, um, you wanted to see me, sir? Uh, purely through the force of circumstances, yes. Uh, Admiralty are starting another of these initiative leadership courses, and Commander Povey wants us to send two suitable men. Men, sir? Mm. Oh, I'm an absolute natural for that, sir. <laughs> I, I'm a born man, sir. <laughs> I mean, a uh, born leader, sir. This course, however, is for petty officers and ratings, Mr. Phillips. Their lordships evidently suffer from the delusion that the granting of a commission presumes that initiative and leadership are already proved. Well, you don't do too badly, sir. Uh, no. <laughs> None of us is perfect, and you muddle through as well as most. Uh, Mr. Phillips? Aye, uh, sir? Now, who do you suggest that we send on this course, eh? Well, there's only one person to send, isn't there, sir? Hmm? Yes, and the place won't seem the same whilst he's away, of course. So that's another good reason why Chief Petty Officer Pertwee should go. I don't think he'll like it, sir. It'll tell me a naval duty the Chief Petty Officer Pertwee does like. I certainly, sir. Drawing his rum ration. Ah. <laughs> One up to you, Mr. Phillips. And anybody else's he can get his hands on, sir. <laughs> uh, who are you going to send with him, sir, on this course? Hmm? Well, as far as I know, Mr. Phillips, there's only one man who would go with him, Abel Seaman. Oh, blow his horrible luck, Johnson. <laughs> here, here, sir. In fact, I'll go down to the stores and get them started on it immediately. Who is it? Abel Seaman Johnson, Chief. Hang on! It's not locked. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Good morning, Chief. Here, have you been in a fight? Certainly not, no. Well, you look as if something enormous fell on you from a great height. It did, mate. <laughs> You're not kidding, it did. <laughs> you know, it's our practice to, uh, to store certain items of heavy equipment on them beams up there. Yes, Chief. Here, where's it all gone? It's still here, my son. But next time you're going out and intend to slam the door after you... Well? Make sure the Chief Buddy Officer Pertwee isn't standing underneath the flaming lot. <laughs> Ooh, did it all come down on top of you? It didn't come down, Johnson. It hurtled. <laughs> hurtled? Hurtled, yeah. I caught the lot on the bonds. <laughs> it may interest you to know that the, the item that did the most damage was your kit bag. Oh. Oh, wow. well, it would have done, you see. I've got me harmonium a minute. <laughs> an harmonium a minute? Yeah. What the Portland Bill are you doing with an harmonium? I'm waiting to be discovered. <laughs> Oh, I don't know, stone me. Jazzy Johnson and his hot harmonium. <laughs> it's not an hot harmonium. It is now, mate. I've burnt it. Hey? <laughs> Vandal, you burnt my harmonium. I'll never play on it now. Well, I didn't even know you could before. Well, I couldn't, but now I never will, will I? <laughs> well, I don't know. If you walk into the boiler, you might just get in a quick chorus of blaze away. Vandal. Well, you couldn't even play the perisher. No, but I was red hot on the peddling. <laughs> Practice for hours, I did. Johnson, do you mean... Do you mean to tell me you kept pumping the thing up without playing a note for hours on end? Yeah. Mind you, I had to stop after every quarter of an hour. Why? Well, me harmonium started getting bigger. <laughs> <laughs> you should have kept going and fluttered off with it. Ah, if I had, then I'd be discovered all right. Nobody else plays a flying harmonium. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Yeah, well, you were a vandal, you know. I'll right? belt up. Blooming harmonium burner. Call cut about your burning harmonium. Ah, good morning, Chief. Oh, harmonium. Oh, good morning, sir. <laughs> Jove, it's nice and warm in here, isn't it? Yeah, it's the vandal, sir. Johnson, Johnson. Well? Go and chuck another octave on the boiler. Uh, stand fast, Johnson. I have a little news for both of you. Both of us, sir? Uh, yes, and uh, here's a little present for both of you. A sixpence each. Oh, thanks very much, sir. I'll put it towards a new harmonium. Don't touch it, Johnson. Don't touch it. Hey, there's a dirty great snag here somewhere. No catch, Chief. No catch. It's an honour. I, I, I thought so. This is hotter than your harmonium, Johnson. Uh, you are both on an initiative and leadership test, as from now. Well, thank you all the same, sir, but I... We don't know what. A leadership test, Chief. Oh, I've heard about them. They're the things where a couple of mugs are given sixpence and have to go hundreds of miles without any other help. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> all right, all right, come back here, you obnoxious nit. Won't yes, you? Johnson, yes. You've got your sixpence, but you don't know where you have to travel with it. Uh, look, do we both have to go to the same place? Uh, certainly, certainly, Chief. You're going to Malta. Oh, well, that'll make a nice change. We're back in time for tea. Eh? <laughs> Kind of Malta, is it? Malta, Chief. What, Malta on a tanner? Six copper coins of the realm of peace. Very, uh, genomistotical of you, I'm sure, sir. <laughs> but if it's all the same to you, no thanks. I'm sure there are lots of lads training at the leash to do a world tour on a tanner, but not yeah, me. Yeah, Chief, uh, the question of volunteering doesn't enter into it. Uh, this C.P.O. Pertwee is a dead lumber. Thank you, sir. I had noticed. Splendid. Uh, I did tell you that you've got a week to get there, didn't I? No, sir, you did. A week? Six pennies and seven days, Chief. Neat, isn't it? Uh, grand morning for a hitchhike. <laughs> oh, all of those six pennies and seven days. Stung me. Oh, no, he's going to be at sixes and sevens by the time this little lot's over. No, I don't want to go to Malt, or I don't. Why not? I don't like Malt. Oh. Look, malt doesn't come from there, you perishing pudding. <laughs> now, come on, pack your noddy toothbrush and let's get started. <laughs> we'll never get there. Uh, if you hadn't burnt me harmonium, we could have gone on that. Oh, come on. Commander Purvey, Portsmouth here. Commander Shaw, Admiralty here. 
Any news of the chaps on that leadership course yet? Not yet, but now I've discovered who they've sent, I'm sure we shall hear something any time now. Oh, really? Who's on it? Chief Petty Officer Pertwee and Abel Seaman Johnson. Good heavens! I'd better warn the sea lords at once. They'll do their tiny nuts. Mm, I shouldn't worry. They haven't got the brains to get across the road, let alone across Europe. Oh, I know the sea lords haven't. <laughs> But these other two will probably start international situations all over the confounded globe. Mm, I'll ring their number one and get them stopped. Good show. England will be a lot safer if you do. Totally bye. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, have I cut you off again, sir? Uh, just for once, Cynthia, no. <laughs> will you kindly get me the number one of the island draft? Well, I'll try, but when they know it's us, they usually hang up before I can get a word in. Oh, really? Hello, number one here. Oh, surprise, surprise, you're through. <laughs> this is Commander Povey, and I'm speaking from Portsmouth. Then why did you use the phone? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what can I do for you, sir? You can cancel their leadership test. It's off. Oh, on the contrary, sir, it's on. The Chief and Johnson have left. What? Yes, I imagine they're probably on the cross-channel boat by now. Oh, very well. What on earth possessed you to send those two of all the personnel on the island I shall never know? Now I'll get them taken off the boat and sent back. A pity, because I'm sure they'll be both terribly disappointed. Mm, I can imagine. All right, number one, leave it with me. I'll check up on the channel boat immediately. Goodbye. It was an high class harmonium and all. All right, all right, all right. Once I got the wind up it, it stayed up it. All right, I don't care. Well, oh, Vandal. Look, stow it, and I'll buy you a French horn. <laughs> we'll be docking in a minute, and Chief Petty Officer Pertwee's got to constantly trait on speaking France. Isn't education wonderful? Yes, indispensable, that's what it is. Yeah, when you're going abroad. Now then, come on, let's get down the gangway and find a way to Italy. Italy, can you speak their lingo too? No, Johnson, no. Now, unfortunately, I never learnt italics. No. <laughs> uh, come on, Ed, excuse me. Ed, come on, Ed, John. Ed, pardon me, more. Pardon me, more. Do you mind? Come on, Johnson. Look, get out. Get out of the way! <laughs> Pretty language, innit? <laughs> yeah. Hang on, we'll ask this froggy. Uh, uh, pardon me, more, but, um, uh, who, 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 who is Italy? Silver plates. <laughs> He's a foreigner. Hey, sorry, mate, I can't understand you. I live here. Uh, je sais de où est... You live here? Yeah, I was born and bred in Ride. Lovely spot. Ride? Johnson, you daft nit. You've smuggled us onto the wrong boat. <laughs> this is the Isle of Wight. Well, can't you speak White Isle and ask him the way? Uh, <laughs> look, Johnson, I know the way. Oh. Yeah, wait a minute. Look, there's a relative of mine on this island somewhere. And he's in the air charter business. He can fly us to France. You should have brought my flying harmonium. Oh. Don't start that again. Come on, and we'll never get anywhere. I, 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 I simply don't understand it. it it's, it's absolutely ridiculous, number one. They, they've completely disappeared off the face of the earth. I doubt it, sir. That's too much to hope for. Well, we've checked every channel, but there's not a sign of them. You're quite possible, sir, but uh, with Pertwee, that doesn't prove they weren't aboard. He's been getting on and off trains, buses and boats without the knowledge of the authorities for years. <laughs> oh, well, let me know as soon as there's any news your end. Uh, certainly, sir. I say, I suppose mm. Pertwee hasn't gone, gone off via America, sir. Oh, why should he? Well, he might have thought it was a prettier trip, sir. <laughs> possible, Mr. Phillips? It's possible, but my bet is that he's in France somewhere by now. Oh, then we can expect the French to break off diplomatic relations any time now, sir. <laughs> you think so? Oh, it's dead cert. Don't forget, he's only got sixpence, so he'll probably try a scrap metal deal with the French government to raise the wind. Scrap metal deal? Yes, sir. The trouble will start when they find they bought the Eiffel Tower from him. <laughs> I wish you hadn't thought of that. Uh, turn the radio on quick. The radio, sir? Uh, yes, I want to be certain Big Ben's still there in case he went that way. <laughs> Garçon. Garçon! No, he seen you. He saw me hours ago, but still no wine. Uh, things will be different when we can pay our bill, huh? Have you got the car? Oui. All the watches are stowed in a false compartment in the boot. Once we get them to Switzerland, we shall be rich. I still don't see the point of smuggling watches into Switzerland. <laughs> you do not use your brains, Henri. 
Everybody smuggles watches out of Switzerland, so you cannot buy one there for love or money. <laughs> we'll smuggle them back in again and clean up. Ah, huh? Brilliant, mon ami. But how do we get the car to Switzerland this time? What we need are a couple of English tourists who are short of money. We'll ah. tell them the car belongs to a sick aunt in Switzerland, ah. and she needs the car to get about, huh? Ah, huh? you are the brainy one, Gaston. <laughs> Where do we find the two... Where do we find the tourists? Right here. Right in here, in here Johnson. This will do us nicely. Ah, well, I'm not having frog's legs on toast. <laughs> I'm starving. My stomach's touching my spine. Hey? Never in a million years. That's so. <laughs> ah, the English toys, no? Ah, well, in a manner of speaking, yes. <laughs> sit down, sit down. You must, uh, you must uh, dine with us. Oh, uh, very nice. Very nice of you. Thank you, sir. My friend and I were admiring your little, uh, uh, your little uh, sailor suits. Watch it, Johnson. Oh, well, uh, well, uh, you see, uh, where, uh, where we come from, mate, uh, sailor suits are all the rage, as you might say, eh? <laughs> Johnson? What? Sit. How are you off uh, for money? Johnson? What? Stand up again, we're leaving. Wait, wait, you do not understand. No? My friend and I have a little, uh, <laughs> a little business proposition to put to you. <laughs> Hello, uh, Sub-Lieutenant Phone answering. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, Sub-Lieutenant Phillips ringing. Who? Who? What? Oh, lummy. Uh, I'll, I'll ring you back. Well, what's up, Leslie? Uh, the balloon, probably. That was Interpol. Into who? Pol, uh, as in parrot. They want a description of Pertwee and Johnson. Oh, good gracious, what have they done? They're not sure, but they want to catch them to find out. <laughs> well, you better tell number one. You come in. Uh, panic station, sir. I've, I've just had a phone call. Really? Well, why should I get in a panic because you've answered the phone? Mm. Uh, on second thoughts, perhaps you're right. Who was it on the phone? Oh, uh, that was into Parrot, sir. Into uh, what? I, uh, <laughs> uh, Parrot, sir, you know. As, as in, uh, as in Paul. Um, uh, they, they want a description of Pertwee and Johnson, sir. Good oh, gracious. Mr. Phillips, we must get after those two lunatics, bring them back before they bring down the French, Italian, English governments and the Americans start firing monkeys at everybody regardless. Is the minister aware that as a result of the exploits of these two members of the armed forces, the Italian government has dispatched a strong note in which they state they understood the war was over? <laughs> and in the event of further aggression, they will appeal to the United Nations? Chotsu? Hmm? Oh. Wake up, wake up. What is it, Chief? I want a teensy-weensy bit more suntan oil on my right shoulder blade. <laughs> I'm burning. Mm, not so much as my harmonium did. <laughs> oh, look. <laughs> Will you leave off of that, your flaming harmonium? Yeah, flame is right. <laughs> Vandal. Look, look, slap that suntan oil on and shut up. You know, this is a life, grease ball. <laughs> See Naples and die. <laughs> If them froggies who own that car ever catch up with us, we probably will. Oh, I don't see why. We took it across the border for them, didn't we? Yes. Well, what's more, the engine pulled a lot better when we removed all the excess weight in the boot, didn't it? <laughs> How did you guess all them watches were in there, Chief? Well, simple, Johnson. You know, car engines are supposed to tick over. But when you switch the engine off, they're not supposed to go on ticking. <laughs> That accounts for it. I thought the floggle toggle was in the wrong place. I don't know about that, but I flogged all their toggle all right, didn't I? <laughs> I've never seen so many watches. Oh, we're, we're showing a fair profit so far, Johnson, I must admit, yeah. Ah, well, I want to get home again. Won't be long now, Johnson. I've, I've booked the flight to Malta. And once we get there, their rollicking lordships can pay our fare back. Well, what are we waiting for now, then? I can tell you that. 
while waiting for Abel Seaman Johnson to put in some of that perishing suntan oil on cheap for the officer Perkby's right shoulder blade. Right, oh. Ow! <laughs> you heavy handed, no nothing great in it. You wait till I get you home. I'll have you cleaning out the stores for a month. Cool. With your eyebrows. Oh. Hey, you chief, who's looking after the stores while you're away? Oh, I don't know. I suppose some nosy park will be turning everything over and... Yeah. To... <laughs> Here, Johnson. What? Pack up! We've got to get my way to Malta and back to them stores a bit sharpish. Oh, well, we're just going to bounce me beach ball a bit. Oh, come on. We're the ones who'll get bounced if we don't get back. Come on. All right. <laughs> Garçon. I shouldn't bother, mon ami. They won't give us any more credit. Oh, nom de. If I could only get my hands on those two sailors who smuggled our smuggler. Oh, you'll never see them again. You're yeah, in here, Mr. Phillips. Uh, well, there's no sign of Chief or Johnson here now. Uh, they must have moved on, sir. I wonder if anyone here remembers them. Hmm, well, let's, uh, let's ask those two. They look miserable enough to have had a passing financial acquaintance with the Chief. <laughs> What a good idea, sir. Thank you for your confidence, Mr. Phillips. <laughs> Not at all, sir. Uh, let me talk to them. Hmm? Try. Yeah, I got school cert, sir. <laughs> now, um... <laughs> um, uh, bonjour, monsieur. <laughs> Sacre bleu, more of them. Yeah, very likely. Um, Avez-vous um, seen um, uh, de Matelot, uh, Anglais? In, um, uh, E.C.? Hmm? First they steal our car, then they steal our smuggle watches. Now they've deserted their leaders of their own gang. I don't think I quite follow this yeah, chap. Well, so hmm? neither do I, but I think it's time we left. Yeah. Come here. I say, uh, steady on. Steady on, I'm English, you know. <laughs> I mean, now you've just allez <laughs> Let go, will you unhand Your accomplices hmm? stole our smuggle in Switzerland. Where are they? I don't know. I wish they were here right now. So do we. And if we can't guess them, we'll get you. Now, yeah. look out, Mr. Phillips. Where? Ooh. There. Oh, that hurt. And so <laughs> will <laughs> this. I'll get you. Run for it. Yes, Lord. Oh, 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 And in conclusion, <coughs> is the minister aware that as a direct result of information laid by two upstanding uh, uh, French citizens, the Swiss customs authorities are holding two British naval officers in connection uh, with the smuggling of, of uh, watches? <laughs> uh, furthermore, 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 they are being held... Uh, furthermore... Uh, furthermore, they are being held in close arrest uh, until the fine is paid. Tidy yourself up a bit, Johnson. We haven't come thousands of miles to get bunged in the rattle for a sloppy turnout, you know. This is me best offer. I see. Yeah. Well, your uniform's tidy, all right. It's the filling that's sloppy. You're rotten, you are. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. You go around burning people's harmonium <laughs> when they're not even playing them. Look, I'll catch you a fork in one in a minute. Now, let's go and see the officer about our fair home. Come in. A chief of the officer, Pertwee, and Abel Seaman Johnson on leadership test reporting. Sir. Well, there's no need to be quite so noisy about it, is there? Oh, pick up on, see. Shut up! Chief, shut up! <laughs> oh, I never said a blooming word. Now, oh, steady down, chap, steady down. Now, oh, what's all this about? Well, haven't you heard about us, sir? We've come from England on a leadership and an issue meet auditive test, sir. From England? Oh, well done. What's the latest score? Abel Seaman Johnson, sixpence, Chief Petty Officer Pert, we are blooming fortune. Uh, we were told to report you, sir, and uh, you would arrange for our transport back to our draft immediately, sir. Really? Well, that's all news to me. I'm sure you've got it right. And he seems a bit stupid coming all the way here to get your fair home again, doesn't he? Uh, Admirality orders, sir. Oh, well, that explains it, of course. 
No, they once sent me to Iceland. What for, sir? Jungle training. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Look, just a minute, sir. Look. What does a naval officer want with jungle training? Well, nobody understood that bit of it either. <laughs> Staff officer reckoned the Admiral had seen Sanders of the River on his telly and he panicked. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, very, very probably, sir. Yeah, yeah. Very amusing. Oh, yeah, oh, yes, sir. But if, if we could be getting on our way, we'd be very much obliged, sir. Well, I'll have to check up, of course. We should be able to get you mobile again after lunch. Amuse yourself until then, will you? Aye, aye, sir. Sir? Well? If we've got to amuse ourselves, do you happen to know if there's anyone who's got an harmonium and I could have a pump at? <laughs> I'll take a running pump at you in a minute. Well, I'm getting here to practice. Well, I'm not. The bell, turn, keep right, keep right, keep right. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Oh dear, you don't know, you really don't know, Heather, how I've suffered. I wouldn't mind, but we're going to go through all this again when the Chief and Johnson get back. They haven't suffered like we have. No, but judging by number one's expression when you got back, I've a feeling they're going to. Has he calmed down at all? Well, I think so. Now he wants to have a court-martial before the lynching. <laughs> well, I don't know, Johnson. Where's the welcome home to our Johnsy banner? I can't see it. Lummy, it? Chief, you're back. Oh, uh, we are indeed, sir. But don't worry. I wasn't expecting the fatted calf because I brought him with me, sir. Do you mind? <laughs> well, without putting too fine a point on it, Chief, I think um, number one wants to have a word with you. I do indeed. Just step into my office, Chief. Oh, blimey. Uh, have a nice chat. Have a nice chat, Chief. And uh, uh, watch what you say. Watch. Oh, oh, help. Rumbled again. Close the door, Jim. Uh, close the door. Uh, mm -hmm. It's closed. <laughs> and I've got 14 witnesses, so who don't happen to be in the country at the moment, who can prove that I was nowhere near. And I have exactly the same witnesses 24 hours later who can prove that you were, Chief. Oh. Uh, we committed the error following you, well, part of the way. How much you make on those watches, Jim? Oh, blimey. Mm -hmm. I might have known it. Well, after, after deducting the travelling expenses, sir. Yeah. Uh, about two pound ten, sir. Uh, how much? <laughs> ten pound two, sir. Uh, <laughs> how much? Hundred and fifty knickers, sir. Uh, your last offer, Chief? Yes, sir. Splendid, just right. Just right? Yeah, yes, Chief, because I took the liberty of inspecting the stores in your absence this morning. And I could have sworn that you were about 150 uh, knickers worth short. Blimey, is that all? I mean, no, no. <laughs> no, wait a minute. Now, look, I can explain all that, so you see. Johnson uh, uh, came I'm in sure you'll get it. But don't bother, because I shall be making another inspection tomorrow, and I'm sure that I shall find I was mistaken and the stores are correct. Stone me. 150 quid straight down the drain. Not down the drain, Chief, just in the stores. Oh, yeah, yes, yes. Well... By the way, there is one other thing. Yes, yeah, I said I was afraid there would be, yeah. Uh, I think their lordships would like their sixpence back. Their sixpence? Mm. What are they going to do, sir? Buy a battleship? Six copper coins of the realm, please. It's a carve up. That's what it is. It's a dirty great carve up. That's I what it is. I agree with you more, and I hand it over. Um, Heather will give you a receipt on your way out. Grand uh, touring weather, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> And that was Dennis Price, John Pertwee and Leslie Phillips working their passage in the Navy Lark, written by Laurie Wyman. Dennis Price was the number one, John Pertwee was the chief petty officer, Leslie Phillips was the sub-lieutenant, Commander Povey was played by Richard Caldicott, Abel Seaman Johnson was Ronnie Barker, Heather was Heather Chasen, Henri was Tenniel Evans, and Gaston was played by Michael Bates. The recorded production was by Alistair Scott Johnson. <laughs> <laughs>